This is a video I've been wanting to make for a very long time. Uh, the Wago PFC controllers use a Linux operating system, which allows them to vastly expand the functionality by building packages for this. Uh, the trick is that there is no compile, uh, there's no compiler on the controller itself, so everything needs to be cross-compiled in a um, separate environment. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this video is how to build that environment and configure it, get ready to build packages for the Wago PFC product. Uh, this is going to be a multi-part series. Uh, part one is really just going to be building the environment and building a firmware. So um, all you're going to need is a laptop with a virtual machine environment. Uh, let's get set up and get started. Now if you navigate to global.wago.com, go to products and new products, you can scroll down and find embedded Linux. Here you can register to download the link. Then we're also going to need to download Ubuntu's uh, version 14.04, which we can do from the Ubuntu site. I'm going to create a virtual machine, and I'm going to uh, boot this .iso file that I downloaded from the Ubuntu site. Okay, once our Linux environment's booted, we can log into this. Uh, one step I've already taken uh, that I did offline was um, I downloaded the board support package um, which is now in my board, my, my downloads folder uh, in zipped format. So um, the reason I did this is Wago uh, requires registration uh, to, to track the users of this board support package. So um, you can do this uh, from your registration. I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract this folder here. So it's just going to open it um, in my downloads folder or extract that and uh, create the directory in the downloads folder. Um, we don't need to be in this file window anymore, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to open the terminal program. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see it. And start out by entering super user. So Wago SU or sudo SU, um, these are password that we set up. And Step one, so I'm going to run this touch command in the sources.list.d in the pingutronics, um, dot list. So essentially we're creating this. We're going to do this and we are going to now uh, run a, a, a line that will add this directory to our main, uh, or our pingutronics.list. All right. Once that's done, we do a sudo apt-get update, so it updates our list. It's verifying all the old things in our list. This error that we get here is okay. Um, we can ignore that. And we're going to exit super user now. <clears throat> and we're going to run this. cat etc apt sources dot list pangatronics dot list. And it's going to return the link that we put in there. Now we'll be able to do this sudo apt-get install pangutronics archive keyring. Great, so now it downloaded the keyring and we're going to also run a sudo apt-get update one more time. All right. The next command we're going to run is we're going to do an apt cache search Cortex A8 Linux new ABIHF. And this should return all the all the components it just downloaded. Once we get that confirmation, we're going to clear and we're going to do, run a sudo apt-get install of this toolchain. Um, all these lines of code are in the how-to document. 
um, that's um, part of that zipped file that you've downloaded. So I'm, I'm actually copying and pasting out of there. Um, I do that for the longer things, but we'll, um, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I type out some of the other things that need to be typed. So it's telling me it's going to install these packages. We need to let this complete. Great. So once that's done, um, now we're ready to install just some generic packages into this um, Ubuntu system. So we're going to clear this. I'm going to start with this line and I'm going to add some things to it. So sudo optget install libin curses 5 dev. We're also going to install gawk, uh, flex, bison, text info, python dash dev. G plus plus L Z O P auto conf lib tool X M L starlet and X S L T process. Run this command and let this complete. our screen again. <clears throat> and now we're going to go into our our downloads folder uh, and the WAGO PFC BSP directory. And now we're going to extract or uh, untarball this um, PTX dist folder. So we're going to do tar dash xjf ptx dist 2013.03. So this is our ptx dist toolchain. We're going to now go into that directory that we just uh, extracted this to. And we're going to run a configure. So dot slash configure. We're going to run the make. This is going to execute the make file. And once that's complete, we're going to do sudo make install. Great. So next, we are going to back up a directory. Now we're back in the main Wago PFC BSP folder. And what we're going to do here is we are going to extract the the backport device tree um, tarball. So we're going to do tar dash xzf ptx dist backport device tree. Okay, and this is actually extracting it into this main Wago BSP directory. So once we've done that, now we need to copy this ptxd make dts dtc shell script into the um, scripts folder for the ptx dist. So we're going to do that by running a sudo command sudo cp uh, ptxd make dts dtc.sh and we're going to move this or we're going to copy this uh, into the user local lib ptx dist 2013.03.0.0 scripts lib folder. And now we want to go to that directory that we just copied that to. So cd user local lib ptx dist scripts lib directory and we want to chmod this we're going to change the permissions on this folder chmod 664 ptxd uh, make okay set the permissions there my bad didn't sudo. 
try that again. Okay. So now that's done, we want to go back to our uh, main directory. Um, here we're going to make a new directory. So make directory, we're going to call this Wago. You'll see it here. If we get a list, there's our Wago directory there. Okay, so we're going to cp downloads logo pfc ptx oops, ptx project we're going to move this tarball file to the wago directory we're going to go into that directory and we're going to extract this tar to xvif excuse me xvjf Okay, once that's complete, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen again. Okay, so now we're left with this directory and our tarball file. We don't need we don't need this uh, tarball anymore, so we're going to get rid of it. Shar ptx project dot tar. Okay. So now we're going to uh, enter this directory. Now we're going to run this ptx to select configs. And then we're going to run this command ptx to platform configs wago pfc platform config. Um, we can ignore this error here. So next we're going to run this ptx dist toolchain. Um, we're basically going to point it towards this toolchain. And the, the command looks like this, ptx dist uh, toolchain, um, and we're telling it to use this toolchain that we downloaded. So it confirms found in using this toolchain. And now we just need to enter some menus. So here, oops, we're going to do ptx dist menu. We just have to enter this and exit. Uh, there's nothing that we need to change in here. Let's clear this. ptx dist menu config. We need to enter this once as well. And only once we can exit now. And now we can run ptx dist go dash q. Once the build is complete, we now have a, um, a complete uh, cross compiling tool chain for the PFC product. Uh, from this, we can actually build an entire firmware. So um, when it's complete, we can just enter the command ptx dist ptx dist images. What this is going to do is it's going to bundle up the whole um, the whole tool chain into a firmware for the PFC. And it's done. So now if we, if we navigate to uh, platform and images, you can see right there we have our sd.hd image. So if we, if we chose to, we could um, copy this to an SD card. So I have an SD card here. Uh, which I'll plug in. And what I can actually do uh, with this is I can essentially copy this straight out of the environment here.
this sdh sd.hd image file let's make this a little bit smaller drag this right onto my desktop And I'm actually just going to change the name of this to sdhd.image. So it's a recognized image file. I've got an SD card here. I use this Apple Pie Baker software for my, for my Mac OS. And what I'll do is I'll just navigate to the desktop, select, select this file, and I'm going to restore this to the to my SD card. Okay, it's complete. And it's ejected. I'm going to take the SD card, place it in the PFC 200, and then power it on. And so once that's completed and the PFC is booted, we can just pull up a web page and call the uh, IP address of the controller. And you can see when it boots, we have it displaying firmware version 99, which means it took our firmware and we are off to the races. So our environment's now ready to go. Uh, we have everything in place now to build our own packages for the, for the PFCs. So um, this is going to be a multi-part series. So please stay tuned. Uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe.